Hey everybody, it's Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fisherman Board for Outfitters at Thursday Night Live Fly Tying, and I'm here to bring you another quick tie. Tonight we are tying um, out of episode 7 of season 4. If you want to head over to your kits, just like this, and if you haven't yet got one of these kits, you can still get one of these. Head on over to www.flyfishingboardriver.com backslash TNLS4 and get yours today. So let's go ahead, we're gonna grab this, this guy here, season four, episode seven. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna work with some of the material we have in here tonight, but we kinda gonna improvise so I can better show you some of the techniques as well. The one that you're gonna see in there is this big kit. It's got lots of uh, what appears to be green material in it. This is a streamer, um, this is a pine squirrel micro game changer, okay? So what I'm actually gonna show you guys tonight so you can a little better learn the technique I'm gonna tie it out of this stuff here. Okay, we got the micro pine squirrel zonker. This one's an olive, okay? I'm gonna show you and take you through this fly. This is more about learning some very specific techniques on how to build some little brushes as well as some palmering up to create a very simple but effective game changer. Let's head on over to the vise and I'll show you what we're gonna get up to. I'm gonna use some uh, UTC 140 in black tonight. Um, something dark in color that uh, matches basically into the, the color of the material you're gonna use. So I'm going to start um, by getting that first small um, little shank into my shank jaw, my Norvice. I'm going to come in here and on this first one, I'm just going to close off that opening as well as get my thread started. Once I've got that like that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few feathers, okay? Now these feathers can be taken off of any kind of pelt, um, any type of, I'll show you this one here. This is just a hen cape. Very simple, soft hackle feathers, whatever you want to do. I'm going to use a few of these guys here. I'll show you how I'm going to prep them. So we're trying to imitate a fish's tail here. So I'm going to come in here, peel these off like so. So I've left with something about that size. And then I'm going to come up to the very tip and I'm going to peel some back. So I'm left with a bit of a triangle at the top. I'll go in there and snip it out. When I pull those back forward, you'll see it kind of looks like a fish's tail. Okay, so I'm going to tie in, I'll take a little bit more off this. I'm going to tie in three of these, okay? So I'm going to start by flipping it so it curves to the outside. So if you look at it like that, you can tell that the feather is going to curve away. And I'm going to tie that in right here. So I'm going to do one on this side, one on the top, and then one on the near side to me. So I'm just going to do that three times in a row. So I'll come in here, prep another feather, do the same thing. Come in here. Just repeating the same process over here again, guys. Nothing too crazy. Just gonna work on creating another second tail and you wanna keep them very similar in size to each other. This one looks pretty close. I'm gonna come in here, pinch that on there. When you're working with a super small sh uh, initial shank, it can be a little bit challenging, but we're gonna do a little bit of work back here before we move forward, okay? So that's two, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna put this one on top. We like to have three of them. Just kinda creates a, no matter which way the um, this fly spins in the water. It's going to give the appearance that there's a tail. Come in here like so. There we go. That's the last one. Again, so it curves up. I'm going to set it in here. Try to get it right up on top. Secure it in place. And then I'm good to go in and trim out the stems of those feathers. So what I'm left with is something that looks like this. And you'll see how good that looks here in a moment once we get this fly finished up. So first thing we're going to do here, guys, we're going to make on, um, I'm going to make a total of four pieces on this hook. So I'm going to do the tiniest um, shank, and then I'm going to go up one more size to this guy here. And then I'm going to go one more time to this guy here. And then I'm going to go directly to my hook. We gave you an extra larger one if you had bigger material and you wanted to tie it another um, length, you could. But as this is a micro game changer, I like keeping it nice and small. I'm going to make a dubbing loop and I'm going to show you how I'm going to work with this material in a dubbing loop. A little bit different material to do this with. So again, I'm going to make my loop, go around it a couple times so it's secured in place. I'm going to throw in a little half hitch here just to save my work and get my bobbin out of the way. Now we've done lots of these over the past few weeks where we've been working with these little, um, basically just a dubbing brush. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in, I like to use just a little bit of wax, not anything crazy. This stuff is just a premium dubbing wax by Wopsy. It's just enough to hold the material once I get it in there so it doesn't move around me while I'm trying to work with it. And you'll see why that's important here in just a moment. So I'm going to go into this stuff here. This is, again, a Micro Pine Squirrel Zonker. It's what I like to use for this stuff. Um, I'm just going to cut off a little piece because I'm going to make my first dubbing brush quite small. Or my, sorry, yeah, my dubbing brush here. Because this first one, 
I'm just basically going to cover up my thread wraps here, but this is going to show you the initial technique to basically getting this in place. So I kind of like to come in here and fluff that out off the zonker so it, it stands up quite nice. I'm going to come in here and you'll get better at this as you go with doing it with just one hand, but you're going to split your thread back open so it's like that. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to slide that zonker into place. Let it close. So I'm de dealing with something that looks kind of like this. So now you can see I have that in there. I have the fur or the, sorry, the leather right up against where the fur is sitting. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that piece of leather back just a bit. And I'm going to trim it out. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. So I'm going to pull that back just a bit. And then I'm going to come in here with my scissors. It can be a little bit challenging to get it at the angle that you want it. Of course, it never wants to go the way you want it to go. We're going to come in here. We're going to trim off just the leather portion. Which can be a little finicky at times. But do your best when you're cutting to be quite gentle with it. And don't pull out the hair or any of that fur as you do it. There we go. I get that out of there and I'm left with this. Okay, I'm left with something that looks just like this. Now I want this first section to be quite short hair because it's we're, we're building a taper. It's going to be smaller at the back and build to a bigger front. So I'm going to pull some of that hair back through so it looks like that. Okay, so I pulled some of the hair back in so just the very tips will be showing. I'm going to give that a good spin. You're going to watch this cord up quite nicely. Just like that. And that's what I'm left with. Looks something like that. Just got all that pine scroll. The tips are, are uh, quite pokey we'll call them with a lot of under fur so i'm just going to brush it just a smidge to pull some of that stuff out that i might have secured and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to start wrapping this starting right back against the feathers and as i move forward each time i'm going to stroke the fur back and go forward i'm going to try to get it all in here Ooh, that came off i'll bring my thread back in I'm going to secure that off. Make sure that my jaws are a little tighter. I can come in and trim off the tag from that loop. Okay, so this is the first piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead in here. I'm going to whip finish this. Give it a good whip finish a couple times. You could touch some resin on there if you'd like, but it shouldn't go anywhere. If you're using a little bit heavier thread, you've done a couple of good whip finishes. Trim my thread out. That's the first one, guys. First one done. So I like to map it out on my table in front of me. So I just got to go in and grab my next piece. It's ready to go. Now I'm going to take that little bit of a clip and I'm going to clip it into that next piece. I like to go down so it's a little easier to get in. And that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to take it. I'm going to flip it upside down. It fits a little nicer into this jaw. So it sits like so. Just like that. And now we're going to get start building the next one. So I'm going to go ahead, start my thread again. This time we're not going to add any feathers to the back. So it goes a little quicker in that regard. So we're going to do two segments of this are going to be in the dubbing brush. And then two are just going to be wrapping the zonker. So you get a nice little taste of both kind of ways of doing it. And also it's going to build that nice taper for us. So this time I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead, build another little brush. So I'll make that loop. Wrap forward. Get that in there. Pull that aside. I'm going to get my spinning dubbing tool in there. I'm just going to put a little bit more dubbing on there again. This isn't really, guys, to hold the material in place. It's more to just help me when I'm putting it in so it's a little bit sticky on that thread. And that zonker doesn't want to pull away from me too bad. Now, this time, I'm going to need a little bit longer piece. Not crazy long but a little bit longer. And some of that's just kind of judging as you go. If you've tied them a couple times, you'll know. Maybe it takes a couple times to figure that out. So same thing, I'm gonna add this strip into here. The longer ones are definitely a little bit more difficult, so just bear with me. It's a little bit of a process to get them, to get the whole piece in there. It's always easy to get the first little bit, but then getting the rest of it kind of centered in there can be a challenge, but that's again why I use that little bit of wax. And that one went in not too bad. 
It's going to make sure I pull it all back in. So you're left with something that looks like that. Same thing as last time, just a little bit farther. And now again, guys, we want to be really careful as we trim this out, not to cut our thread or cut any additional hair off because we want the length as much as we can on this one. We're just going to cut up as we go as close to that leather as we can this time. It's really advantageous to have nice sharp scissors when you're doing this just so that you don't lose any of it. You get deep into your scissors when you're cutting. Doing your very best not to cut your thread either. Just like that, get that out of the way. Now I'm left with it in there like so. This time we pulled some of it back so that the, the length wasn't as long last time. And this time we wanna do the exact opposite. We wanna pull those tips out so they're nice and long because this time we're gonna build a little bit more of a taper. So once I've got it where I want it, I'm going to give this one a real good spin so none of it comes out. And what it should do is with those tips being a little longer, we're going to build a little bit bigger profile this time. Make sure that's spun in there really good and it's not going anywhere. I am going to come in and just touch it a bit with a brush again. Not a lot, just a little to pull a little bit out. And then we're going to get back to palmering this forward. And just like last time, every wrap I'm going to pull rearward stand up and try not to cover up any of my previous bit of fur that's underneath there and once I get up to the front here I'm gonna make sure I'm covered right to the eye and I've got more than I need here so I'm gonna come in here and wrap this off don't need to use all of it and now that's gonna stand up a little taller than the last section which is creating that taper for us Make sure that's good and secured. We'll whip finish this. Stick with me here, guys. It's a little bit longer fly, but I promise it's gonna be worth it when you're done. Whip finish. Trim out my thread again. Now we've only got two parts to go. These ones we're not gonna build uh, loops for, so it's gonna go even quicker. So I'm gonna grab my last one that I'm gonna use before I go to my hook. Gonna get that pushed through there. I can just like so now you can see we're building a bit of a taper already We've got a little bit more bulk in that next piece we'll get this secured in here again make sure that your vise is tight enough holding these in because these guys like to slip around sometimes on you which is not to your advantage to wrap back wrap forward lay a nice thread base down I'm gonna go ahead and trim out my thread and now this time I'm just gonna grab a nice piece of this again same zonker that we've been using the pine squirrel I'm gonna peel just a tiny bit off free right at the front so I've got some bare fur to tie in I'm gonna tie it up at a bit of a 45 to the direction that I want to wrap it so because I want to wrap um, back towards the far side of the fly first, that's why I tied it in like that. And I'll move forward. I'm going to throw a little half hitch in here, toss it off to the side, and now I'm going to start palmering it forward. If you got a hair clip there um, near your vise, these are always good. These little guys for holding your work out of your way. And now as I palmer this on every wrap, I want to pull that fur rearward. And this fly is never going to look as good as it looks until it's in the water. Once it's in the water um, and you get all this fur wet, it's going to sit back real nice. Right now it's going to kind of look like a mohawk and want to stand up. But if you wet your fingers and, and pull it rearward, you'll see. It's like that. You're going to see how it's going to lay back real nice on itself. Going to look nice and full. Once I'm up to the eye, I'm going to come in here. And tie it off. I'll do a quick little, quick little whip finish. Right there. And then we'll move on to the very last section. There we 
There we go. And then I snip that out, and then I'll cut out that piece of zonker. All right. One last piece to go, guys. I'm going to pop this out. I'm going to leave this to the side for a second. I'm going to go ahead and grab my hook. I'm going to get my hook secured. Now you're going to want to just grab any piece of mono or backing or anything that you have um, to tie this next piece in. I'm just going to use a piece of fly line backing here. Super simple. I'm going to put this in through the eye. Doesn't really matter what you use. Something with a little bit of strength though. Make sure it's not like three or four pound or something. Make sure it's got a little bit more than that. I'm going to double it over so it looks like this. I'm going to go ahead. Start my thread, the eye, work it rearward, lay just a little bit of a thread base down for this backing to grab onto. Trim that out. And now I'm going to keep this pretty tight. I don't want a very big loop. So I'm going to lay that right there with just a tiny bit of space be from where I tied in. Come in here. I'm going to tie that in on top. I'm trying to keep it right on top of the hook. And then as I move forward, now that I got that a little bit secure, I'm going to come grab my hair clip again. And then I just want to do my best to keep it up on top of the hook shank with some open spiraled wraps. And then when I come back over top of it, I'll really secure it. And I come up to just behind the eye and then I'm going to start working my way back a bit. Fold that back over. Double up the strength. And go ahead and trim that out. And then I'll put some thread wraps on top of it. Secure that really well. Now we're just going to use some very simple eyes here, guys. We're going to go in. Um, these are just bead chain eyes. This is going to be a fairly unweighted fly. You could put bigger eyes on if you so chose to. All I'm doing is taking them like so. I'm going to figure eight them on. Make sure they're not going to go anywhere on me. Do some figure eights. Just like we would tie in dumbbell eyes. No different. Secure them down both ways. We just want to keep them as even as we can on both sides. And get them like that. Make sure they're not going to go anywhere. Once I feel like they're good and secure, I'm going to work my way back down the fly to where I left my tie-in point. Now I'm going to go back to my zonker one more time. And I'm going to tie this in for the last time. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to take just a little bit off. So I got some fur to tie in. Tie it in at that little bit of an angle again. Work my thread forward. I'm going to do a quick half hitch. Save my work. Because I'll come back to that to tie this off here in just a moment. And now as I go forward. That nice open palmer again. Pulling that material rearward. It does help if you if you uh, moisten your fingers just a little bit. As you go, it pulls back a little nicer and it likes to sit down so you get a better idea and representation of what it's going to look like when it's wet. But the leather on the underside is what tells you the truth. So you want to keep it touching wraps all the way forward. Try to sneak one more in behind the eyes. Then I'm going to skip right over top of the eyes. Not going to try to zigzag over them, nothing like that. Just once over couple more wraps till I hit the eye here. And I'm going to use some thread wraps to push the front material back a little bit. So once I'm here, bring my thread back in, go over top, make sure that's secure. Again, as always, we do a couple wraps behind, a couple in front. I'm going to trim that out. Now I'm going to take some thread wraps and make almost a bit of a nose on this guy here. Covering up that little bit of leather that I left there too. Just like so. And it's going to help push some of that fur rearward like that. When you moisten it a bit, you get a good idea where it's going to go. And guys, I don't have much left to do here. I'm going to whip finish this fly. You can add some resin if you need to. And this is our Pine Squirrel Micro Game Changer. When you pull it out... You're going to see a beautiful taper that took place. You can see how I got a bigger up here at the head and it tapered into that nice tail. This guy is only about three inches long. It's going to have all the action in the world in the water. I think that's a pretty sexy pattern. 
Takes a little bit of boot work to tie. Try it in some different colors. Fill up your box with them if you're ready for a streamer day. Again, I'm Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. This has been a quick tie from Episode 7 of Season 4. Can't wait to see you guys again. Till next time.